You know, I'm gonna say something funny. Funny when you are. Yo, this be the one them called Tech Nine, and I'm right here on the sausage. Uh, you really don't want those when you're having a party. You know what I'm saying? But in this case, it's 100 Tech Nine on the sausage. But I don't really be on the sausage. But this is just the name of the thing. You know what I'm saying? That I'm doing right now. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm talking about. We don't eat hot dogs on this motherfucker. Tech Nine. <laughs> He's a, he's a hot dog eating motherfucker. <laughs> 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 no, they just call the sausage, nigga. Whatever's covered, I'm gonna tell you how you eat some sausage, nigga. Look, bought all these. Look at this shit, man. Oh, look at all this shit. Look at all this shit, man. What is that? Sausage. Nigga. Yeah, that's the sausage. 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 What kind of sausage, sausage. is though? Sun-dried tomato sausage. Oh, that's a special <laughs> sausage. We got it. We got it. Turkey sausage right here. Ugh, I ain't even never heard of no turkey that's sausage. That's healthy sausage. Yeah, that's that exclusive shit. <laughs> <laughs> that is. Word. And it's probably more in the freezer and shit. So the questions are in here, huh? Yep. Yeah. So um, I'm supposed to open it and. I'm trying uh, to damn, this is sausage for real, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> a hot dog. Oh, so I just put it off like that? Yep. Yeah. Okay. I smell them. Yeah, they ain't even cooked. <laughs> um, well, let me see, what number is it? Number 14. Oh my god, I got it. The greatest piece of advice I've ever received was from Quincy Jones. <clears throat> he said, tech, tech, rap what you know, and people will forever feel you. And I started writing my life. Next thing you know, I had fans, and I'm still gaining them from day to day, and it's growing like crazy, man. That's a good question. Yeah. Go ahead and grab the next one. <laughs> grab the next sausage. <laughs> <laughs> Number 11. Who gave me the name Tech Nine and Y? A guy by the name of uh, Walter Jefferson. We called him uh, Wee Capone. He had a group called um, Black Mafia. Um, in 1988, he gave me the name Tech Nine because he said that I spit. Rapid fire, like you know what I'm saying. So that's why he gave it to me. You know, he went through a guns and ammo book and he read off all these names. And at the end of it, it was a picture of a Tech Nine. And he said, Tech Nine. I'm like, ah, that's okay. He said, That's gonna be your name until we find something else. <laughs> We're never about anything else. <laughs> Number ten, dude. You don't think this is crazy because I've done Red Rocks and I've done um, Roskilde Festival in Denmark. It's huge. Um, I've done Amsterdam. I'm saying I've done every place but the Sprint Center thus far. But Wayne brought me out on stage at Sprint Center. And it was beautiful and everybody roared. But the one place I would like to go do a show because I'm a humongous Doors fan is the Whiskey and Go Go. On Sunset, I've done the Roxy, I've done the Key Club, I've done the Key Club when it was Billboard Live, I've done House of Blues numerous times, I've done uh, the Palladium or whatever you call that place, I've done a lot of places in LA but I've never done the Whiskey or Go-Go and I know it's small but I've never been inside it or anything so I'd like to do it no matter how small it is. Yeah. John, oh yeah, <laughs> smell these damn sausages, man. Uh, and Hawaii. Hell uh, yeah. Number six. <laughs> I'd kick it with this cat. You know what I'm saying? I used to get high as hell back in the day, man. I almost died. I did 15 pills in one night. I'm not proud of it. I wrote a song about it. Like the hit, hit go. No, I'm joking. But uh, uh, he inspired me to do strange music, to do my label. You know, his music inspired me. Their music inspired me to do strange. I'd like to see what else that I could have been inspired to do just by me. Because I met Pac, and he inspired me to want to do more music for the ladies. You know what I'm saying? Just like Biggie said he did for him. You know what I mean? Certain people being around certain people, man, you, they spark you to do great yeah. things. And I hope I do the same for people. You know what I mean? Yeah, we do a couple more. Yeah, yeah. 
Yes, oh Jesus, this is fine. I'll do all of them for real. Right. Right. Oh, no. Number four. I want them to be whatever they want to be. Rainbow wants to do something in music. She's my youngest. She's 13. Dante is 17. Aaliyah is 17. They're going on 18 this year. Um, Dante has his Dre beats on like all day. I don't know what he's doing and he's just listening to music. I don't know what he's gearing up for. He said he wants to be an engineer. He said he wants to go to uh, Full Sail down in Florida. You know what I mean? And uh, Aaliyah. I don't know, man. She's she's like a lawyer, man. You know what I'm saying? She's so smart. You know what I mean? Um, they rapped on my album, My Youngest Rain. She says she wants her 16 bars now that Aaliyah had hers on the rain, you know? So I might go ahead and give Rainbow her bars and see how she does. But I don't. I just want them to do what they want to do. You know what I mean? I don't want to push music on them. It's naturally within them already. You know what I'm saying? Their mama loves music too. And my son's mom, um, Ronnie, Roni, she, uh, she's an MC also, you know what I'm saying? So he's bombarded by it. Right. So I like to see what happens with Donnie. I like to see what happens with Rain. I like to see what happens with Aaliyah. I'm curious to see what happens with Aaliyah. Because mm -hmm. she can go any direction, you know what I mean? She's so smart. You know. Number three. Chris Calico is an eager guy. So whenever the soldiers are taking us to Issa Base or Camp Buring or Erif John, all of the places, you know what I'm saying? Um, they want us to like get up on the Patriot, Patriot, Patriot missiles and everything, take pictures and like mm -hmm. stuff. I don't really like to do everything outside of my lane. I like to stay in my lane. You know what I'm saying? I don't really. Nah, go ahead, Chris. Chris will climb the big tower and everything. And it's all the way up there. And I'm like, yeah, that's cool. No, I'm good. And I'm a thrill rider. You know what I'm saying? I do. I bungee jumped. I, 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 I'm, I'm a coaster enthusiast. All that, man. You know what I'm saying? But certain things, I just don't want to touch. I don't want to climb a big ass tower that you can see all the way across to the other <laughs> enemy side and you know so I don't yeah, care yeah. you know what I'm saying so when we were in Kuwait it was our first day in Kuwait you know what I'm saying we did the first days in uh, Bahrain and we did the shows there and it was wonderful Bahrain is more like party town you know you can drink and everything in Kuwait totally dry cool you know what I'm saying can't take no Cabo Wabo with you but it's cool you know what I'm saying so it's like <laughs> uh, all day Chris was doing stuff you know they bring out the dogs and everything and Chris put on a jacket and have the dog bite him and I'm like, you wanna do it? No, no, I'm good, man. Because it pierces through, you get cut a little yeah. bit, you know what I mean? I'm like, no, I don't wanna cut my tattoos. Well, you know what I mean? He's valuable to me, you know what I mean? It mean a lot to me, no way. I don't want no dog to bite me that won't happen in a regular setting because I stay in my lane. So, <laughs> it came to get up in a big ass uh, helicopter called an Apache helicopter. And a Apache helicopter, the cockpit is like up there. You gotta climb up in it. Right. So Chris goes and climbs. Yeah, I wanna take one picture. Yeah. So my publicist is with me the whole day. He knows I've been haven't been doing stuff all day. So he's like, Tech man, you wanna get up in the um, helicopter? I'm like, no, I'm good. And he's like, come on man, you ain't did nothing all day. So I'm like, fuck it. So I'm climbing it up, man. You know what I'm saying? Not with the Cabo Wabo, but I'm climbing <laughs> yeah. up it. You know, so I wish I had the Cabo Wabo in Kuwait, but you can't have it. You know what I'm saying? So it's pretty weird. <laughs> Make it more believable, you know what I'm saying? So I'm climbing up and I miss one of the handles. And I fall, try to catch myself, and I fall all the way back down and hit the side of my ribs on the side of the edge of the big helicopter and I catch myself, but I didn't know I cracked my eighth and ninth rib, man. So on the show that night, like right when right when I did it, I'm like, see, I told these motherfuckers to stay in my lane. I done broke my damn ribs in Kuwait. I've been paying the whole time doing it. They took me to the TMC, the the, 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 the troop medical center. They said the eighth and ninth rib was cracked. Do you want to cancel the show? I'm like, no, I'm going to do the show. All four of the remaining shows, you know. And I did it in pain, and that's my Kuwait story. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm long-winded, man. Damn, it's 2 o'clock, too. I got to get dressed. Hold on. We're gonna, we, we only got a couple more. Saw Jesus. Number one.
Face paint, uh, I became what I feared as a child, uh, the clown, you know what I'm saying? I always fear the clowns when, when I go to the Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus and Ararat Shrine Circus. Uh, I was always afraid because you never knew what the clown was actually thinking because the smile is painted on and I was a kid but I was always thinking deeper like what's behind that smile, you know? Why does he wear gloves? What are you protecting? What he's going to do with his hands? You know what I'm saying? That he can't get his fingerprints, you know what I'm saying? Like what? And it was the whole mystique behind the clown. You never knew. It was mysterious. Like, who is this person for real? My clown that I became happened to bring what's inside out of me because I'm actually a shy person. So the clown, me putting on that mask, I didn't know back in the day that it was shielding me from the shyness, you know what I'm saying? And bringing what's down in there, all that raunchy shit that I say that I wouldn't say regularly in plain face. I don't know, man. I just became that mystery. Like, what the fuck is that? He's black and he got, what the, what's going on with him? It'll make you ask a question and it'll make you listen. That was my idea. The word fear means to me, and I fear nothing. God, for real, but it's one thing I totally fear every night. Fear means to me putting together an intricate ass show when you know it's impossible to do all the Midwest choppers in, in a row on stage, when you know that beautiful music is an impossible song to do really because of all the dynamics in it, unfair, red nose, all that, and you do it every night He's a mental giant, all these words that rhyme, and you gotta say all of them. I am fucking paranoid up there. If you look at me when I'm doing the Midwest Choppers, my mic is going like this, I'm shaking so bad. So when the fans meet me, I haven't told them this, but when I do my meet and greets from three to four every day, the fans are shaking when I hug them. Man, like I'm so nervous. And I wanna tell them, oh, don't worry. When I'm up there in front of you guys tonight, I'm worse. So I exchange it back because I want it to be so perfect that I'm I'm so paranoid that I might drop a word. And you cannot drop a word on Midwest Choppers because it will mess up the whole line. And you have to just stop and try to regain because we don't have the lyrics on the track. So just the overdub. So anything. A guy jumped on the stage like a couple of weeks ago and was coming toward me while I was doing it and threw me off. And my security pushed him off and he went head forward into the crowd, boom, and threw me off, and I just stopped. I'm like, what the fuck you doing running up on my show? I'm fucking my lyrics up, Duh! and I just put the mic down, I looked at the crowd, it was a sold out crowd, I'm like, this motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? And it's the worst feeling in the world, man, I have to have all concentration, so actually what fear means to me is fucking up on that stage when I am technician number one, and I'm supposed to be the perfect dude on the mic. And so far, besides that, it's been a flawless victory. You know what I'm saying? Strange music, baby! That's what they say. Tell those who may say.